So far this year, I've tried to branch out a little bit and do some cult movie genres that I haven't tackled yet. I've done jungle exploitation films, Korean knockoff cartoons, not to mention whatever the hell Raw Force was. Well now it's time for another genre I haven't tackled yet, the British sex comedy. Now some of you may be thinking, wait a minute, wasn't Queen Kong a British sex comedy? And the answer is no! That movie contained neither one of those things! Spaced Out is a 1979 British sci-fi sex comedy that some of you may have seen on Late Night Cable. Or who knows, maybe you were busy watching Shannon Tweed movies on Cinemax. I didn't have Cinemax growing up, so I had to take what I could get. The point is, I saw this movie on TV several years ago, and now I get to revisit it. Because what's the point of this series if not showing you all the weird shit I wasted my childhood watching? Anyway, the opening credits give us a fantastic view of a third grade solar system diorama. We also find out the movie's based on an original idea by David Speechley. And that original idea is, what if aliens came to Earth to bang humans? The music's by Poacher, probably because it's about as pleasant as hearing an animal getting killed. I'm just joking. If there's one thing I can say about this movie, some of the music's actually pretty catchy. I mean, just listen to this theme song. Yeah, it's like if Kraftwerk did the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack instead of the Bee Gees. Anyway, we begin with British Clark Kent here out on a date with his girlfriend. Will today be the day he gets lucky? Don't stare at me like that, Oliver. Yeah, he's totally gonna get some. These are our main characters, Oliver and Prudence. They're having some relationship problems, mainly because Prudence has problems with having relations. Stop that, Oliver! How many times do I have to tell you? When we're married, Ollie, you can have it as much as you want. On Saturday nights, anyway. Aw, oh, come on, baby! Your name's Prudence, not Chastity! The curtain material. It's got these little flowers. They're sort of blue. Blue like the color of the sky. Yeah, or Ollie's balls. Well, the name of the movie's spaced out, which means we need to have some aliens. Come in, engineering. Control requires situation report of malfunction. Listen to me, engineering. You tell what's going on soonest. Do you read me? Yeah, I read you. Hmm, they're not showing the aliens' faces, which leads me to believe that they must be totally hideous. Before we get to that, though, let's see some of our other characters. It shouldn't take long, since there's only seven people listed in the entire cast. It's all you ever think about! Oh, Christ, I must do something about my sex life. Nah, don't worry, pal. The movie will do that for you. Alright, time to get introduced to our last human character, Willy, played by I can't believe it's not Robin Asquith here. Oh, hey, he's reading Bouncers, my favorite magazine about bar doormen. Man, these aliens must be advanced. Their ship has all the latest analog technology. Also, they appear to be flying into a Jefferson Airplane concert. The aliens decide to land in the park where our main characters are gathered, although the landing must take a long time since it's dark when they eventually get there. The light has caused the peripheral area to dark. Rubbish, it's just one of those mobile discos. No, it's not. It's the spaceship from Turkish Flash Gordon. One thing's for sure, these people are definitely gonna get a close encounter when they enter this ship. And what the hell? You mean the aliens are actually attractive? Who could have seen that coming? What is that? Oh, this specimen appears to have absolutely no tissue growth on its chest whatsoever. Nah, give them a few more years. A lot of guys get tits when they get old enough. So as you can probably tell, the premise of the movie is that the aliens are all female and they've never seen a man before. And lucky for them, they get to see some of the finest male specimens 1970s Britain had to offer. The aliens are Partha, who works the engines, Kozia, who's the ship's scientist slash doctor slash whatever, and the ship's captain, who's just called the Skipper because... I don't know, maybe she's a big Gilligan's Island fan? They keep the humans locked up for observation, except Willy for some reason. This can never be a mobile disco. Nah, it looks more like the set of a cheap Star Wars spoof. Oh wait, never mind, maybe it is a disco. Unfortunately for you, it looks like you're not on the guest list. I'm going to give you the once over. You are? 
Nothing personal. Oh. What's that? You'd better tell me or I'll blow your brains out. Now, when you say blow your brains out... Wait a second, that gun she's holding looks familiar. Is that... Holy crap, it is! It's a Star Wars blaster! Alright, at least now I know these aliens come from a galaxy far, far away. Or George Lucas lost a poker game to one of the producers. But never mind that, time to teach Partha about human sexuality in the most awkward way possible. What are they doing? Well, he's so... what? Are you any good at it? I'm not bad. That means you're also not good, kid. Of course, he doesn't need to be good in this movie. <laughs> How was that? Ah, uh, best death ever! Come in, please. Did you intercept the alien? Affirmative! Bring it along to observation immediately. Right. Damn, cock blocked by the skipper. Oh well, how are the others doing? I I'm not quite sure how these doors operate, but it's uh, probably a photoelectric cell and silicone chip circuit. Yeah, something tells me the silicone's somewhere else on this ship. But maybe being trapped together will allow our characters to get to know each other. Look, is this with you? If so, keep it quiet. Oh, really? Really. Women like you shouldn't be seen, let alone heard. Thanks, 1979. Female Mad Max does not look pleased. Behave well, and you will remain unharmed. Behave badly, and I will terminate you in an obscure and painful fashion. Obscure and painful, huh? Yeah, sounds like a lot of the movies I watch on this show. Besides, there's no reason to be scared. It looks like they're just taking them to a 1970s swingers apartment. That way they can trade stories about getting lucky. Well, but this woman see, and... Well, she and... Well, me, and... And then we... Well, it's... Uh, I'd rather not talk about it. It's a bit embarrassing. A hot chick tried to fuck you. That is the exact opposite of embarrassing. And if that's what they're trying to do to the humans, I don't even want to know what they've got planned for these cows. Speaking of which, why the hell are they still on Earth? Did they use up the movie's effects budget already? They finally realized the movie's called Spaced Out and decide to take off. Oh, what do you know, they're playing the space race music from Earthworm Jim. I couldn't kick my way out of a wet paper bag right now. Alright, how about you just try acting out of one? You know, I gotta say, some of the space shots in this movie are a lot better than I expected them to be. It's almost like they're not originally from this movie at... Oh, they're not? Okay, that explains it then. Well, at least they spent some money on Kozia's wardrobe. Sure as hell doesn't look like they spent it on the catering. I hope medium rare is satisfactory. The hell are you asking me for? I'm not in the movie. I'd like you to meet your fellow guest. If you put these coins in, he will talk to you. Oh, right. I should probably mention, in the original UK version of the movie, the jukebox was voiced by Bill Mitchell, but in North America, it was redubbed by none other than Bob Saget. Unfortunately, the only version available on DVD is the British one, because apparently the filmmakers wanted to deprive me of material. God, so many full house jokes I can't even use now. All right, well, back to the movie. Look, I know nobody's interested, but will you listen to me for just one moment, please? Nice to know the computer from Barbarella got more work after that movie. At this point, the aliens debate whether or not to put the Earthlings in a zoo, but first they need to learn more about them. The ones with the flat chest have these strange appendages. Biologically speaking, most interesting. No, what's biologically interesting is how you manage to reproduce when you have female sex organs, but no men around. Now that they've learned about human biology, the skipper keeps busy practicing fighting the Herbie Hancock rocket video. Well, might as well start drinking. This orgy isn't going to start itself. And you know what? Screw it. I don't care that Bob Saget's not in this version. I'll just add it myself. I was hearing from the producers of this movie, who are good friends of mine, and we have all jacked each other off out in public places. Oh, God. You, come with me. My pleasure. That's not what she meant by come with me! Yeah, you're right, Skipper. This guy does deserve a crotch kick. Now his balls can be black and blue. The aliens give the humans a series of tests to measure their strength and intelligence, but before we get to that, this. Did she just die? Oh wait, I guess she's fine. 
Well, that was random as hell. How'd you like it if I exploded at the end of one of my videos and then just came back with no explanation? And I'm starting to question some of these tests they're giving the humans. <laughs> Kato? Let's see if the intelligence tests are going any better. Are you paying attention? Judging by his eyeline, I'd say no. Cliff fails the intelligence test, but let's see if he can teach Partha about this thing we humans call love. Why did you do that to my neck? Why didn't you like it? I've had no complaints before. You've never heard any complaints about you going up to women you just met and kissing them, huh? Yeah, somehow I doubt that. Prudence looks a little upset. Maybe she can't find love is thicker than water on the jukebox. Only the other day when I asked him whether he preferred wallpaper or paint in the sitting room, he flung down his paper, said a very rude word, and walked out. Ooh, a rude word, huh? You mean like this? The mouth-fisting, dirty, sick, hemorrhoid-infested, bloody vomit, shit, diarrhea-covered, pedophilic piece of shit. It's Willie's turn to face the skipper in one-on-one -on -one combat, and since she did a Kato impression a second ago, I guess it's only appropriate that Willie Inspector Clouseau's his way through the fight. What's this? Hey, wait a second, I recognize that. That's a Tusken Raider stick. So of all the movies to have official Star Wars props in them, Fucking spaced out. Chest expanders. <laughs> oh, by the way, I have no idea why her voice is echoing like that. I guess the movie figured if you're not high yet, it might as well trick you into thinking you are. You better do a, a bias scan on the small flat chested creature. Will do. And be careful. It's extremely dangerous. No, you're just an idiot. Willie gets a physical from Kozia next, and right now I bet he's regretting putting on his Captain America underoos that day. Would you remove your remaining garment, please? Hey? I have to have a visual record of the small vestigial limb located beneath your stomach. T hey, it's not that small! You really need to work on your bedside manner, lady. Also, I don't think that lightsaber she's using is official. Now, measurements. Two and a half inches. <laughs> Three and a half inches. Six inches? It's growing! Now that Kozia knows that Willie's a grower, not a shower, she decides to ask him some more questions. So, this is your means of reproduction? Well, some of it, yes. Speaking of which, I've been meaning to ask you, what's your means of reproduction? I mean, are you guys from, like, a turkey baster-centric society, or what? I've never been so humiliated in all my life! Hey, relax, Skipper. The movie will be over soon, and then you can go on to be in the pirate movie. Besides, we still have to get to the movie's first real sex scene. I want to do it again. Oh, no, no, just, just relax a while now. We'll do it again later. No, again, again! Oh, no, no, please. Ugh, don't you just hate it when a girl only wants to bang all the time? It's the worst, isn't it? I don't know if Cliff has a foot fetish, but it sure seems like the cameraman does. And it looks like there's more good news for Willie. According to the bioscan, you have one of the most advanced bodies in the universe. Why, your test scores are almost as high as Will Ferrell's. Why don't I demonstrate to you the reproductive wonders of possibly one of the most advanced bodies in the whole universe, yes? Uh, congratulations, Willie. You just joined the Million Mile High Club. You may not believe this, but that was really my first time. Yeah, I think she figured that out when you blew your load after about 30 seconds, Willie. And it wouldn't be a sex comedy without a sodomy joke. You can have a steam bath and lose some weight at the same time. Eh, that's okay. I'd prefer not to lose the weight out of my ass. Also, I think the budget for Kozia's wardrobe is starting to run a little low. Looks like Partha managed to wear out Cliff, so let's see if Willie's game. I mean, if you've got the most advanced body in the universe, you must be incredible at this. Well, let me see. Um... This and... Uh, ah! Okay, so far I've dubbed Bob Saget clips over the jukebox, but let's see what it really has to say. I stroked her leg once, and she brought her knees together so hard that my fingers were bruised for weeks. That's it. Violence. What she's trying to tell you is give me some of that. So your advice is to have Ollie beat the shit out of her. All right, thanks, Ike Turner bot. You got any more good advice? I've seen it everywhere, kiddo. The caveman approach. Works with chicks like her every time. No, it doesn't. I tried showing my girlfriend the movie Caveman, and it totally didn't work. Now it looks like it's Willie's turn to bang Partha. I don't have much to say about this scene, but the space disco's kinda nice. You, you got me up there. I'm floating out air. I think I'm in love with you. I know that 
Yeah, good to know in the 70s even aliens had the funk. That may have sounded like a doorbell, but it's actually the noise Willie makes when he comes. Okay, actually it's the skipper asking for Willie. Turns out she's a little jealous and wants him all to herself. Please, come in. Uh, he already did, but thanks for the invitation, I guess. Uh, you've never really seen the universe until you've viewed it through a giant game of Simon. Meanwhile, it looks like the jukebox is still giving Oliver relationship advice. Eh, screw it, I'll just put more Bob Saget clips over it. Is there, is there a way you can cut that, that, that fucking your kid part out of this? Well, I believe so. Okay, that's not what he says, although I don't know if what he does say is gonna help. Try to see the ravaging primeval beast that lurks within the research assistant. Prudence, I'm a man. I mean, I'm Superman. Uh, hang on, let me try that again. And sooner or later, the inevitable must happen. Ah! Get away from me, you please! Come back! Get after her, man! Yeah, your girlfriend's not gonna rape herself. Speaking of which, no means no, lady. And Cliff's about to find out that if you introduce a buttfuck chair in the second act, you damn well better use it in the third. Well, I guess it's appropriate they're playing deliverance music over this part. Now we can find out if Cliff squeals like a pig. And it turns out the only thing Prudence needed to be ready to have sex with Ollie was a change of clothes. I'm assuming, since she's wearing a different dress now and suddenly she wants to have sex. Help me long, darling. Funny, I would have thought Ollie was the type of guy that would have hearts on his boxers. And don't bother covering up your dick, we can see it in the next shot. Meanwhile, the aliens ask Willie to come with them, although, are they still trying to sell him to a zoo? They never really say why they want him to come with. Where we come from, there's no one like you. You'd be unique, supreme, unchallenged. She's got a point, as long as Robin Asquith's around, he'll never be unique on Earth. But maybe the jukebox can help Willie with his decision. Where is everyone? They're making out and having sex. They're all having sex with each other. By the way, this would be a good time right now to take your pants off and get some lotion. All right, all right. I just wanted to get one last Bob Saget joke in there. What? You mean there was all that buildup and Oliver's done already? Man, he may not be Clark Kent, but he is faster than a speeding bullet. The aliens prepare to drop the humans back on Earth. At least I think that's supposed to be Earth. But it looks like they're encountering a little turbulence. Look, we ran out of Space 1999 effects, so you'll just have to trust us that they landed, okay? I see Prudence and Ollie are experimenting with new positions, but what the hell happened to Cliff? <laughs> and on that day, Cliff discovered that that's actually his thing. Okay, so everybody returns to Earth, but the Skipper tries to convince Willie to stay with them. I've come to find out whether you're returning to that squalid apology from planet. Hmm, judging by the slap bass, I'm starting to think her intentions aren't entirely pure. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna come with you. Pun intended. This is the part of the movie where Willie shows the Skipper his little buddy. Okay, so they take off, Partha gets a money shot from the ship, and it looks like they're about to fly into a Red Dwarf episode. All in all, it looks like things worked out pretty well for Willie. Oh well, if you're gonna die, it might as well be like this. And who knows, maybe they'll just suddenly show up fine again in a sequel. Well, at least this British sex comedy delivered one of the things it promised, which is more than I can say for Queen fucking Kong. The humor's pretty standard for this type of movie, nothing really special, but it's not too obnoxious either. And the movie promises three naked alien babes, and it does give us those things, so I can't really accuse the movie of false advertising. Well, unless we're talking about this poster for the movie. Is that R2-D2 in the background? The fuck? But if nothing else, hopefully revisiting this movie will give people some valuable insight into what people like me had to watch before we got the internet. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. <laughs>